Welcome to the chapter about how plants colonize land. So this chapter is just going to talk about how plants originated in like kind of the progression and which ones are awesome and which ones are kind of lower on the totem pole. So um, about 470 million years ago, the first plants started to come onto land. And um, there are going to be um, two types of plants that we can kind of divide them into. You've got non-vascular plants, which don't have any way of conducting water and nutrients through the plant. And then you have vascular plants, which are going to have a xylem and a phloem to help transport water and nutrients and sugars and those types of things. Um, then we can take those groups and further break them down. So you've got non-vascular land plants, seedless vascular plants, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. So I kind of listed these in order of um, being more advanced versus less. So these two here are going to be less advanced because they don't make seeds. And then these two down here are going to be more advanced because they do make seeds. So non-vascular land plants are going to be really small because they don't have vascular tissue. And so they're not going to be able to grow really big because they have no way of conducting water and nutrients throughout their bodies. Um, seedless vascular plants are going to be ones that are vascular so they can be bigger, but they don't make seeds. They still make spores. And so the reason that that's not advantageous is because spores aren't very good at going dormant. Seeds are great, right? Seeds can actually go dormant for a winter if it gets dry, and then when things get better, they can actually open up and start growing. So the gymnosperms make seeds, and those are actually going to be located in a cone. Think of like a pine cone. And then angiosperms are actually going to create a flower, and that's going to make a fruit, and inside is the seed. So if we look at a PowerPoint, we can see all of these lovely guys. So these are going to be the non-vascular land plants. So you've got moss. If you think about moss, it's really, really short to the ground. Um, liverworts, which you're going to um, see in the lab if you haven't already. And um, those are, once again, going to be very small plants. And hornworts. Um, I'm pretty sure you can figure out why, why they're called hornworts, because they have horns growing out of them. But those are going to be the um, non-vascular plants. Then when we move on, we've got seedless vascular plants. So now we've got club moss, um, ferns, here's some more ferns, um, and whisk ferns. And I don't know, did I? No, I didn't have a picture of a horsetail. Okay, so you can see why they call it a whisk fern, because they were like, wow, that looks like a whisk. There you go. And then you've got the gymnosperms, which are going to create cones, right? So think of like a conifer tree. Um, cycads are also going to create a cone. So these kind of look like a palm tree, and then they have that big cone in the middle. Then, um, oh, okay. I didn't have a picture of a flowering plant. Sorry. Okay. So those are going to be our different types of plants. Now, if you think about coming onto land, the big issue that an organism is going to have is drying out. So the, the, the word for drying out is desiccation. So they're going to have some sort of adaptation to help them do that. One of them is going to be a cuticle. And a cuticle is like a waxy coating on the leaf, and that helps to protect it from losing too much water. Right? If you think about wax and you drop water onto it, it beads up. Right? It's not going to penetrate through the wax. So if you have a waxy cuticle, you're going to keep the water inside the plant. Now, um, another thing they can have is stomata. Stomata are going to be these tiny openings on the um, surface of the leaf. And so when the leaf is ready to exchange oxygen and CO2, it can open these stomata and then close them when it doesn't need to. So it's going to minimize the amount of water it loses to the environment. And that was that picture that was up here. So um, this is a surface <clears throat> of leaves. And then you can see these little stomata. And you can actually see, like, this one's a lot more open than that one, right? Um, but that's what's going to be those things. And there's one that's been fluorescenced, which is kind of cool. And um, let me get back to the notes. Okay, so plants are going to have a haplodiplontic life cycle, which is always fun. Haploid and diploid stages is basically what it's talking about. But what's cool is um, if you look at this picture, they actually are going to follow that same cycle that you learned for the protist. So you have, um, we can just start at the gametophyte. The gametophyte's going to make gametes. The gametes are going to fertilize and make a zygote. The zygote turns into the sporophyte, um, which is here. The sporophyte turns in, uh, makes spores, which turn into the gametophyte, and so on. So it's the same cycle. It just depends on um, which one is like the dominant stage for that plant. Like what's, where is it going to spend most of its cycle, right? So in the next video, we'll get a little bit more into this moss life cycle and talk about that. That.